2008. <laughs> okay, uh, call the uh, November 8, 2022 Marysville Planning Commission meeting the order. Will we please all rise for the pledge of allegiance. I think it's fine. Yep. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Patty, will you please call the roll? Mr. Lemke? Here. Ms. Hoy? Here. Mr. Mido? Here. Mr. Patrick? Here. Mr. Olszewski? Here. Mr. Carnes? Here. Mr. Lebecki? Here. Uh, sort of apologize to everyone who have an election, and we should have probably been smart enough to maybe move this meeting to another night, but we, we, we neglected to do that. So, yeah, time is far, Mr. Chairman. It's okay. We're, we're stuck here in the uh, you're good to go conference room. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we have a uh, minutes from September 13th and October 11th, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the minutes from September 13th were fine as they stood. Um, I recommend them for approval, and the October 11th minutes are fine also. So I recommend that we uh, approve the minutes as written. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We have a period for public comment on the agenda. Has anyone wish to address the Planning Commission with uh, anything in general? Yes. Mr. Patrick. Patrick. Uh, my name is Dennis Bailey. I live at 229 North Wayne Drive. And I have a question about a plan that I believe is going to be imminent to go in behind my property that I own. Uh, I own a, a, a lot. The county line goes through my yard, as Paul Phillip knows. And uh, I own a, a property that is in the Allegheny County side, but it, it uh, butts the Summerhill Estates. And last March, there was a guy putting, uh, there were survey marks on my property. And then uh, last week, there was a track hoe cutting across my property putting in a path, uh, according to the guy, he was saying they're, they're doing pork holes or somewhere, somehow part of the Summerhill Estates. And I convinced them that we looked on the map that he was in their, off of their property. So at any rate, he still meandered away and went uh, up to dig other pork holes. And I'm wondering what was going on and how I could find out what status the plan is that someone's actually uh, doing this. But I want to make sure they don't encroach on my property at least that I'm well aware of how the plan is going to be developed. What street were you on again? I'm on Dwayne Drive. That's a private road. That's, it's a private road in the Murrayville portion. But uh, if, if you look at Summerhill Estates up at the end of Vermeilly, mm -hmm. okay, the old fast fitter property, that's kind of where it looked like he was drilling his pork holes. And I'm trying to find out what's going on. Something is imminent. And he indicated they had, he couldn't tell me who the owner of the property was. He said some kind of ETB. Mr. Morrison, do you have anything? To yeah, it's about uh, a month or so ago, uh, staff had an advisory with a group uh, representing the property owner there. Uh, they're looking uh, to develop plans for proposed townhouse development there. Uh, so uh, I uh, went up to the site area and uh, they are locating utilities and doing core sampling. Uh, I would imagine in anticipation of them developing plans for submittal. We have not received any application of plans to date. This is the remainder of the summer Hill development. That's correct. Up there. Have you been up there, Dennis? You know where up on top of the hill. Where yeah, that's right. Right. If, if you really look, if you if you came remainly drive and you drove straight through that <coughs> plan, it would eventually hit what is Dwayne Drive, which is a private road. I just want to be find out how I can keep advised of what's going on and how that development proceeds because you know that whole hill is uh, you, you could turn it into a work factory. I mean I went down 25 feet on my property and never got through the red clay. Well, there's a lot of you can check with it. Mr. Morrison regularly and follow the you get to Penn Franklin? No. Uh, okay. Well, and when I did get you, it, you, it can, check, play. <laughs> you can check the uh, municipal the website, website uh, to you know uh, to Find out what our agenda is and see what it's see yeah. there. I won't forget you, Dennis. So okay. like, I just want to find out the name of the development. Who, who is it? I don't recall who the developer was. Somehow name. he was involved with the uh, original development up there uh, because uh, he was quite familiar with the um, 
homeowners association and the covenants uh, because that's the first question we asked him if he had access into the plan because there's all private streets up there right and that was that was the question that uh, I, I'm, uh so i'd just like to find out the guy's name okay. gary, gary jim was it gary hall uh it may have been it i'm guessing been. that's who it is it may have been i can check if you could get back to me on that i'd greatly appreciate it because he's that we know how to keep an eye on uh, sold out. he worked with adam x adam x yeah. adam x adam he's in florida most of the year all right anything else dennis uh no i would ask would have asked for the lottery number but someone wanted to tell <laughs> 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 somebody win it yeah, yeah there was a single video yeah, one winner one oh, ticket wow and so it was like two billion dollars yeah I, I lived right on summer hill lane a little private lane up there so you can you can contact me and i think it's good for you as well okay i'll give you my i'll give you my email all right because you know there were some covenants whenever they built that uh, summer hill about the way drive that they were only going to ever put one lot on the Wayne Drive. Okay. I'm a little concerned about what they're planning on for the roads and how they plan on using it and, and also make sure they don't want to access and approach on my uh my other lot that I own behind that. Okay, anything else? No. Okay, new business. We have an advisory for the Kafori soccer fields on uh, 4920 School Road. Yeah let me see if anybody else did There's a bunch of people in the back room. Oh, there are a bunch of people. We didn't have, we didn't have enough room for everybody here. I was texting you. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> How do you want to sell a seat down here? I'll float Why don't you go down there at that end, sir? Technology. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> Make sure the F drive is sealed. Make sure the F drive didn't steal the dump drive. Okay, try G. Sometimes the network drives will steal the dump drive. Uh, the GIS on J. No. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's, oh, no, that's GIS. Okay. Let's find it here. Jim, is it in Dropbox? Can just get in yeah. There. The plan's in drop box. Is that what it was just a layout? Of the yeah, plan? it was a layout. I had, I okay. had a layout. Get your drop box. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I had a location map too. As far as reference, drop box. Oh, oh, members of the planning commission understand what this is. Up there, there's some an area that previously strip mine and it's kind of dips, goes down into the dip there near, uh, near rolling fields. Okay. 
Yeah, not School Road South, Pass Brown Tuff Road, down the dip up the hill, out there, blinks on the right. Oh. Uh, you want me to sure. Can you drive? I can drive. Right. <laughs> That's pretty dangerous. You're giving me the wheel. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. <clears throat> I'm Jason McCobiak. I work for Young and Associates. We're, I'm here representing uh, Mr. and Mrs. Corey uh, for the project that we need. Uh, two soccer fields that we're planning for the property that they purchased on School Road South. Um, I did have a location map, but uh, if you follow the school road out, uh, it's at the intersection of Sheets on 22. So we're probably uh, maybe a mile and a half or so. Um, Lions Run is actually at the southern part of the property. Um, so we we actually submitted the plans, and there were some comments uh, that we we got back from the Environmental Advisory Council. Uh, on the on the plan, um, our intent here is to construct two uh, synthetic turf soccer fields uh, with two parking lots, a storage building with a vending area, uh, one restroom or you know a couple restrooms. Um, the, the intent here is to have club soccer uh, at these fields, so it's a privately owned facility. Uh, the fields will be lit uh, with. Uh, muscular lighting, uh, full LEDs. Um, <clears throat> it will have sanitary sewage connections uh, up on three pool drive. There's there is a manhole that we can get to with a four tank. Water supply is going to be a well on site, uh, a drilled well. Um, the manhole is about 1,200 feet away. Yeah, the manhole is about. Um, you know, there's a considerable amount of earthwork to be done, but it, it was a previously mine site. We did get uh, geotechnical investigation work done. We will do a slope stability analysis uh, for, for at this point, since the grading is, is complete. Um, you know, we're, we're working on an NPDES submission with the county. Uh, we have been working with Jim Pillsbury on the design of the storm, the ENS and the stormwater controls for the for the uh, site. We will do a, an overburden analysis uh, on all the mining spoils that are on site. Uh, the majority of the site, the mining occurred on the western part of the site, northwest and moving to the east, and then it actually stopped at a point. Um, so what we're actually doing is the earthwork is pretty much taking everything from the eastern side and, and you know building two benches in there for the fields. Um, that's, that's pretty much it in a, in a nutshell. Um, you know, we looked at, we did look at the site distance, uh, out on school road and we, we do meet at this point. Uh, we're, we're actually making the, the current entrance to the site is actually a little bit to the, to the Northwest here. So we're actually moving the entrance, um, and then cleaning up the embankments and the vegetation to improve the site distance. Um, in and out of the air, the site. I have a question. He's, this is privately owned, correct? And you said this is for club soccer. I'm not familiar with that. I mean, I'm used to, you know, kids' soccer fields from around Franklin and stuff. But what's club soccer? And So club soccer is, is basically squads that will compete um, from different areas. So they'll come in and, um, you know, different leagues. And host, the, the clubs host teams uh, ages eight through age 19. And basically it's a, it's a league, it's a private league that you would pay, you know, parents will pay to, to have their you know, kids in a league. And that's, that's what the intent is. So it's not, um, you know, it's not gonna be just open to just general uh, use, right? It's gonna be scheduled events that, you know, they know they're only gonna have so many games during say a day so that that's time scheduled you know some parents will probably come and drop off um the games are relatively short um, i know gating the entrance right <coughs> i believe we yeah we will get the entrance right. 
And so who will maintain, I mean, how many acres is this? The development is approximately 18, 19 acres. Okay, and who will be in charge of snow plowing and cutting the grass? And... The owner. Okay. You mentioned lighting. Uh, how late do you anticipate lighting to uh, be on? I would anticipate probably no later than 10, 11 o'clock. Where are the nearest the nearest homes to the facility? The closest home is going to be uh, right here off of Yeah. Uh, that's that's probably the nearest. Um, it's it's fairly uh, wooded around the site. Um, the other thing that you're not seeing is you know that the grading plan, the earthwork plan. You know we're gonna the road gets cut in coming down in the site. So this field's a lot lower than the, the, the surrounding areas. Because it's already kind of in a bowl and we're gonna leveling it out, but it's still gonna be down in. Isn't this area over here all lower than this? It's not? Okay. No, this gets cut off. So that whole thing this is This is all cut on this side? I was just, because you, you go down. As you're going down. I think there. I think there's actually a little bit of a, okay. Look at concourse. Is it all? Is the driveway and parking area proposed to be paved? No, sir. It's going to be uh, gravel. How did you determine the number of parking spaces? Through the trip generation that we uh, submitted earlier, um, and then who was the, uh, the? We had some comments from. Uh, the TPD traffic mm -hmm. planning and design. So, are, are most of the times a, a weekend use or? Yeah, I think it's going to be an evening and weekend use. Uh, and then, obviously, when the weather gets too adverse, they're you know, even though they're synthetic fields, they're not going to. I don't think the intent is to plow them in the winter or have any winter maintenance of the. the so, what's the season for these leaks typically? Probably. Uh, up until I'd say the holidays, you know, you know, during, you know, during the in the fall, and then it would run all the way from spring and then all the way through the summer. Jim, what would this use be considered? Recreation? Outdoor recreation. And in our R, that's permitted use. Conditional use. I it's believe. a conditional use. I believe, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many parking spaces are in this land? We're showing 207 here. That includes the, okay. um, the ADA. So do you envision games being held on both fields simultaneously? Potentially. Okay. Yes. And I think that's where the separation came into play. It, it helps with the circulation and the coordinate, you know, the plant, the uh, scheduling. Um, you know, we allowed some flat areas you know, lawn areas for warm ups and things like that, transition of, of the you know, teams. And and on the smaller fields, uh, the teams are obviously going to be a smaller team. You know, they're going to be a seven on seven or. There's no seating for spectators? No, sir. Uh, typically, uh, club soccer, the duration of the games, again, it's not a, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's not a sanctioned, you know, NCAA event or something that you're there for a long time. So it's typically bring your own seat type seating. And, and some parents, again, I don't think they'll even, they might not even stay. They might just drop their kids off. Is that, that's a hill then that goes down that. So you could sit on the hill. And you, yeah, this is a slope. This is a gently sloped kind of terrace lawn area on the main, you know, on the main field coming down. But yes, this, this field's up higher, <coughs> field's down lower. You said you did geotech already. Did you, did you anticipate any uh, mine water runoff from this? We don't anticipate any, and they did get in groundwater when they did the uh, investigation. When did um, they do that? That was in, I think it was, it might have been in April. April. Yeah, the report day of April. Yeah, that's when they ran out. 
this since this is an advisory, do you have any questions for us? Well, I think what you know the questions we would have is, um, you know, what's the roadmap moving forward? We need to. We obviously need to do the conditional use. Submit the conditional use application. We have to schedule a public hearing. That should probably be our first. Right, yeah, no. yeah, complete set aside plans. Okay, and you need uh, you're gonna need some real uh, convincing that uh, that the lighting should be approved here for that. This, I just might got feeling on the conditional use, or yes, a, I think we can. Well, you might, you might do some uh, uh. Do some sections to show where the top of the light is in relation to you know the okay. surrounding properties it might help help your case. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we'll do that, and I think we have enough information on the, what's that. We, we can. We have a rep here from Moscow that that we're working with on the lighting. Do you want to give a little bit of a? Yeah, I, I put some stuff together, some visuals. Um, I'd be more than happy to kind of run through that pretty quick if there's time. Obviously, if, if that maybe it's the next meeting that that would be even more um, more of more benefit to you guys. Um, we do have right now a general idea on what our spill is going to be. Obviously, that's the biggest concern whenever we put lights in on a place that doesn't already have lights, and even when we retrofit current uh, lighting systems, it's it's something that we take pretty pretty high. Uh, you know, care into when we look at it and actually guarantee our spill lines, we guarantee our spill scans. Obviously, with this kind of being in a bowl, that really only helps maintain and keep that light kind of where you want it and not where you don't. Um, so more than happy to help out, answer questions, provide information. We got some stuff here now. If it's better used of, uh, for everybody's time to do it at the later meeting, more than happy to do that as well. What are the elevation changes? I mean, if exactly we saw elevations, elevations, that would really help that argument. There's no topos. Well, what, what's the elevation difference from, say, here to this field and then down to the next one? Um, you're probably looking at um, 18 feet okay. of elevation difference. What, what about from field? that upper field to the woods? From here to the woods? Yeah. Um, it wants to be a little more. Yeah, there's the probably 30. Elevation. 30 feet. Okay, so it's, and yeah. how about to the nearest home? What would that elevation difference be? I think we're probably 20 feet lower. Okay. Uh, since you're going to have lighting and obviously people there after dark, we thought about lighting in the parking areas and along the roadway going in. We did, yes. Okay, so you're, you're also including that as well? Yes. Landscaping. Yeah. I see you have some. Yeah, I think we would, uh, you know, supplement, <coughs> you know, supplemental buffer as needed, you know, for just out of courtesy. Um, yeah, the municipality has some requirements, and I'm not sure exactly what those are going to be. And we could probably advise them. For, for the parking. Landscaping for the yes. parking. And, yeah. First, you know, I don't know what the surrounding yeah. vegetation is. I don't know whether it's just scrub or whether there's anything high there. Or not. Yeah, there, there's some mature trees uh, in the area. And, and that's why we concentrate the development where, where it's there's not a lot of um, existing vegetation, um, just because of its past use. Well, you may, you may make an argument that uh, the existing right. vegetation may make might take up uh, the need for additional planting. Yeah. Have you uh, thought about a planting module yet for your for your sewage? Not yet. I mean, we're we have, but we didn't we did not submit anything yet. Okay. I'd advise you to talk to FDM okay. and Are there going to be any special uh, ENS requirements there because of that being an advantage or a strict area? No, we 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 are working with. Um, Jim Pillsbury, uh, basically what we're going to do is, um, this is going to be a, a sediment basin, and we'll have temporary uh, swells, ditches going to it, and then we're going to convert that into a stormwater basin at the end of the project. So there is some filter sock, but um, there was no, not any concerns. Uh, 
So he's been he's been really helping us and assisting us through the design process. So he knows what to expect when we do submit the. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else have any comments or questions on this? Yes. I mean, I, I know this is basically. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> a formerly stripped area. Uh, so there's really not much vegetation there. There's there is some sparse vegetation there. Um, there is some mine spoil on, on the site. Um, you know, from an environmental aspect, you know, we're obviously going to make this site a lot better. We're going to we're going to install ten thousand tons of limestone just for the field drainage. The the roads, the parking lots, and the uh, stormwater controls. So, from an environmental standpoint, and then everything else is going to get capped for top and <clears throat> unseeded. So, I think that's really going to put this property into a, the asset column for this community. Yeah. <coughs> and everything does drain down into the you know lines run, and, and ultimately the the Turtle Creek. Well, you know, you know all about. This. Have you applied for an HOP yet? We haven't yet. No, no, no. When do you give us a estimate on when you might be ready for a formal submission after the first of the year? Well, I'd like to. I mean, I want obviously wanted to get it in front of you guys and, and get some feedback. Uh, but yeah, as soon as possible is, is what our intent is. We'd like to go to construction in the spring. I think the concern and the discussion is going to start around us. Is yeah, it's the disruption to the. I mean, it's tucked back in there. Uh, it's going to be the disruption to the area with lighting and things like that. So lighting, focus, you think, going to be the biggest focus on that? I think traffic. Traffic. additional and, and well, and potential traffic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we got the. I'm pretty confident with the lighting. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? <clears throat> Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah. <laughs> next item is to consider authorizing a public hearing, uh, C622, for information uh, for steep slopes for a single family residential. It's a big site. I guess there's a road that goes up to an old gas well and he wants to modify that to use it as a driveway. What's the maximum steep slope? 15 Get it now. We can't get rid of it. Try to hit a stake on the keyboard. Man. There we go. Thanks, <laughs> we have a letter of introduction from Mr. Connors, uh, engineer there, outlining the challenges that he has. Uh, generally, Mr. Connors. But the property at the corner of Ashfall and uh, Maymont proposed to build a single family home there. The problem is accessibility. Uh, it's tried a number of different ways to get access to the site, uh, all uh, creating slopes on the driveway greater than 15%, significantly greater than 15%, uh, also involving uh, a large amount of uh, excavation into steep slopes. Uh, the property had a shallow well on it and a service road for that shallow well. And in working with the conservation district, uh, has developed a plan to try to use that access road uh, to uh, access the site for destruction. That still will not meet the uh, requirements of uh, 
chapter 97, uh, which requires a 15% slope and a 12 foot wide driveway, uh, but proposing, I believe, a 16.5%, yes. uh, which will end up uh, being uh, the proposed uh, driveway utilizing the uh, old service road. So uh, there's two things at play here. One is the waiver of the uh, Chapter 97 requirements on the slope and also uh, the conditional use requirement uh, because of steep slopes and poor soils that would have to be excavated. Thanks, Jim. You covered my entire introduction. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So as conditional use, uh, Planning Commission would have to authorize a public hearing. Um, and uh, uh, most of the plans have been submitted. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the problem with going to 15% on it is by the time we get to the top, the 900 feet, we're digging a 20 foot deep trench. So it's uh, it's a lot of earth moving to get to 15. How wide is the proposed driveway? <clears throat> uh, 12, 12 feet. You know, the, uh... I thought I saw it. Yeah, it was I see yeah, things? Yeah, it. Oh. Are you in that planning one? Yeah, I got, put in yeah, I got dropped into a different. Uh... Sorry. Sorry. It's that's the best example, huh? It might be. Yeah, you know, this is this is the existing gas well road here, and and we're just uh, this is very steep right here. It goes twenty four percent maybe. <clears throat> so to get around that, we're, we're coming down the hill a little bit. And this is a pretty consistent uh, sixteen and a half percent all the way up when we go up in that direction. So is this constantly rising all the time? You're not jumping, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah because it. Uh, it levels off. It's very steep here and it levels off right in this spot. So th this is cut up to here. And then this is, there's about 200 feet of fill there. That's maybe six feet. Jim, is this, uh, <clears throat> we're going to send this to the fireman and the emergency manager? It was sent to them today. How long is that driving? Uh, so the, the entire driveway is about 1,400 feet. This uh, this is, I think, this is about 900 feet here. But from but this is level, you can't see it because you've got an overlay on there. But this is all level once you get to this past the 900 foot mark. So you're about a quarter of a mile, basically. Yeah, yeah. approximately. Yeah. 13, 20, 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Proposing yeah. to pave this? Yes. Okay. Stormwater management along the driveway. That's correct. Yeah, my wife thinks it should be a gravel driveway, but I'm trying to convince her that going 16% for 900 feet is not good with gravel. So. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, ice be and a, snow and just gravel. Just be a mess, right? You can't salt that. Yeah. No, it'll, it'll definitely be paid. Okay, so we have a motion to authorize the public hearing for this application. So moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right. See you in a month or so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, under old business, we have uh, SP3, SC422, the Hermes Gas Well Development. Yeah. And the Missouri. Well, we're up to pay our smoking. <laughs> so it's, yeah, I think everybody has a copy of the proposed conditions for this. Okay, 
Okay, uh, this is probably our third crack at this application. Uh, Mr. Siddix here, uh, representing the municipality, we have the uh, cast of professionals from uh, the uh, Army's Well, Olympus Well. We have got that. Got that. Everybody got a copy of the draft approval. Uh, these conditions uh, follow similar to the conditions uh, that uh, were developed for the uh, Titan well approval and uh, follow through uh, step by step uh, the requirements of the uh, 2031 CC, I believe it is. Uh, unique to this op uh, application uh, is some additional roadway requirements. Uh, they're here to speak to those this evening. Uh, and uh, answer any other questions that the uh, Planning Commission may have. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. It's all yours. Lane Lucas here again on behalf of Olympus on the combined land development and conditional use application. As uh, Mr. Morrison alluded to, I mean, we've had a good bit of dialogue with uh, municipal staff and consultants, uh, particularly on the, the truck route issues. Um, and we hope we're to the point where we, as, as Jim alluded to, where we've uh, incorporated the kind of standard conditions from that were included in the Titan well pad. And then on top of that, address the traffic and a couple other issues that are specific to this site. So we thought what we would do first, since I think the, the, the truck route was the, the big concern, is have Joe Gooley uh, just walk through how the truck route's been re revised and what uh, improvements uh, Olympus is committed to do as part of that route. Well, I have the traffic. Yeah, yeah we've been having some trouble with that uh, being recognized there. Be better with yours. Technology can pull up just Google or Google Maps and We go. Oh, Where is it? There, it is. there we go. Technology break. Yeah. <laughs> so the first guy's drive was a bad drive, huh? So uh, we, we've updated the trucking route. I believe last time we spoke, we had some vehicles using this, we'll call it the residential section of Logan Ferry. Um, after discussions with Jim and uh, TBD, the air traffic engineer, we decided to move all the, all the incoming and outcoming routes, trucks will come up to 38400, come down 38400, make a right on the Logan Ferry and up to the Herman's Well site. Um, this would be traffic coming in from 22. <coughs> and traffic coming in from 366 would, this route did not change from when we previously presented. They will come in, make a right on the 38400 and then make the right onto the Logan Ferry, um, which I believe addresses some of your concerns with that residential section, section of Logan's Ferry. Um, as part of this work, um, there will, Olympus will apply and install a, a minimum use driveway for access to the Hermes well pad. Uh, Logan's Ferry improvements will include a four inch mill and overlay from the intersection of 380 and 400 all the way back to the interconnect, the proposed interconnect back in this general area here. Um, as part of this truck route, Olympus has purchased the property on the corner of Logan Ferry and 400, and we will be widening out the radius for vehicles making a right from 
480, 300 onto Logan's Ferry to allow that maneuver without any off tracking. Um, those, so these improvements on Logan's Ferry, this right hand turn improvement would all be prior to pad construction. Um, the, the, the big kind of change from last time we met was we are now going to work with PennDOT and the municipality to realign uh, 386, 400 and install a traffic signal. Um, so that will hopefully, you know, eliminate any issues here. I know there's some trash history there. So hopefully this realignment and signalization of this intersection <clears throat> will vastly improve, you know, route, you know, through Where, travel. Through where's the light gonna be? So it is going to be at the intersection right here, right under the, the bridge for 286 at 300, or 380. 486. Where Cooper's trailers is. So we're going to have a well, better, uh, no. I, we can't see. Yeah. Where you're, yeah. Where you're pulling. Mm -hmm. Just Google Maps. Yeah. Is that where? It's where that 380 is. So. <clears throat> yep. Correct. Okay. That's fine. So there's going to be. Not a, where the 286 is. No, because it's. No. Right. That's. <coughs> I couldn't see where he was pointing. What do you mean by a realignment? And I'll kind of, I'll go through that. Joe, you might have finished in time in that signal too, because it's not Yeah, uh, yep. I was going to get to that. So it will be this intersection here. Um, so, so what we are thinking is right now, this channel as right is an inbound and an outbound ma maneuver. So our thought is we are basically going to make this just an outbound maneuver here. We're gonna add a, you have the pavement with here to add a left turn lane right. here. And we'll look into what room we have if we channelize this right into here or not, but our thought is, is that we kind of have this kind of do something like this so to kind of plus, to kind of plus it up. Get more Correct. Of a Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. And then the the one difference with that is um, during discussions, this is this will be installed prior to the completion stage of the well, and. I don't know, some of you might not be aware, but pull, traffic pull lead times are crazy long now, like 26 to 28 weeks. So if for some reason this can't get in, if the if the permanent poles cannot be installed prior to the completion stage, we will install them with temporary poles, utility poles, span wire, hang the heads, and then once the, the permanent mast arms get it in, we would install them and, and conclude that project. Uh, there are provisions in the conditions to have that bonded at some point during the process. Once we're further into uh, the project and determining times, yeah. and this will all be at Olympus's cost. We'll fund all these improvements. So, you know, I think you were asking about timing on the lighting. You know, how will that light be timed? Is it on demand, or is it just on a cycle? Or no, we, it, it would it would be an adaptive system. So, I mean, yeah, it would have. It's more than likely going to have radar detectors that would, you know, change cycle lengths as you know times of day change and as traffic demands change. So it won't be pre timed or anything like that. So we like the lights on twenty two. Yeah. It's pretty close to the light that there right down the street from there, right? So it, it is. And, and I know we, we, we've talked to PennDOT and, and we've had some um, discussions with PennDOT about possibly having to add a signal ahead sign because the sight distance here, you know, if you're coming up here, you know, kind of cresting this, you know, if, if someone, if the queue's backed up here, but you know, that's something we'll work through PennDOT with the flashing signal ahead yeah. sign or <coughs> something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. But for the first and second phase, the construction of it and then the drilling, it's not going to change. There's a limited amount of trucks basically getting them on and off the site. So it won't be until that heavy truck traffic, period. 
that it's actually going to be realigned to the signal. And there may have to be a temporary signal, as we indicated, based on the falls. So, um, you know. Yeah, apparently the, the issue is more with the permanent mass as opposed to the signal itself, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, the mass arms are the wrong way. So. Just so I understand, the, the just traffic light is mainly for the construction phase versus the operation phase. It's well, your phases are phase. construct pad, vertical drill, horizontal drill, hydraulic fracturing, and then permanent production. This is for the hydraulic fracturing phase. That's when there's the higher truck okay, traffic. So Once that's completed, traffic drops to almost nothing. Okay, so then this like stays there forever. Yeah, right. And it's needed. It's yeah, needed. That's going to improve that intersection. Okay, got it. It's, In my it's Mr. Morrison's uh, retirement present. <laughs> 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 sure you <You're> your well. <laughs> So that's. I mean, that was seen to be the main issue. From it's been a couple of months, obviously, since we've been with you folks, but that seemed to be the main issue. And we work with staff, and hopefully, this is a resolution that works for everybody. And that's written into the conditions of approval. This is all in number 14 of the conditions. <clears throat> Correct. And yeah, 14. 14F is really where it's right in this condition. Yeah. 14A is the, the driveway, the connection. B are the improvements to Logan Ferry. C are the improvements that intersection with Logan Ferry and SR 400 and 4058. D are the site improvements around the, the intersection there. And then E is the, the signal, which is the, the big item. And then F just talks about the timing of all those. And E it says that the uh, permit plan is to be approved by the municipality prior to submission. So we have final. Uh, that would say in the in it. Uh, we're, we're actually the in the yeah. municipalities. Yeah. We're actually the applicant. Yeah. 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 We have to approve. Yeah, the municipality is the applicant for the signal. Okay. <clears throat> but all the soft costs and support on that will be primarily borne by Olympus, subject to review and input from the municipality. Ladies and gentlemen, any questions on the proposed conditions? I would just comment that uh, Mr. Siddick and Mr. Madri, representing transportation and planning, participated in the negotiations and we agreed this. And the staff is in, in agreement with all the conditions. Yes. Mr. Siddick, you feel these conditions? Yeah, yeah it was a tough action. Municipality. Yeah, yeah, it was a tough. We understood the burden that it put on Olympus for the traffic signal because it's not needed for very long. But we really couldn't solve it any other way because we kind of all were thinking about the last time. <coughs> so it was really, it was really, and we appreciate that, you know, Olympus agreed to make this permanent improvement. So, anything else? Uh, just note that, um, uh, again, these conditions fall, follow the uh, conditions of the Titan Well. Uh, there will be um, uh, sound barrier walls put up in accordance with the uh, noise study that was done. Um, they've uh, agreed to do their best efforts to get electric up there for the uh, uh, fracking. And also there are uh, several waivers here, one being uh, the landscaping, uh, and they've offered to contribute to some uh, difference between what the required landscaping is and what's proposed to the uh, Marysville Community Park. And then there was the uh, uh, noise uh, waiver. Uh, call we did get sign offs from two impacted properties adjacent to uh, the well pad. Do we need a separate motion on the waivers, Mr. Morrison? I think uh, <coughs> incorporated in the conditions, you can just approve the conditions. Okay. And they're limited to eight wells with this application yeah, it's a total of eight wells for no more than two trips it could either be split four four three five two six but uh, and, and uh, from the time construction starts uh all that activity has taken place within five years 
Okay. If there's no further discussion, I see a lot of heads nodding. So, uh, anyone care to make a motion to uh, recommend Chair, approval? I will make a motion that we uh, uh, recommend this to council for approval SP3 and additional use 422 Hermes gas well development. Um, and we have in writing here a list of conditions. Um, also, the roadworks will need to be bonded. And we have two waivers, the landscape waiver and the noise waiver. And with that, I would recommend it to council for approval. Second. Question? All those in favor say aye. 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 Approved. I'd like to thank uh, the Olympus people and their professionals for the, their diligence and knowledge uh, that they brought forth to the whole application process. Appreciate your cooperation. Yeah, we appreciate them working with us. I think that traffic light will be a big improvement mm -hmm. just for the whole community. <laughs> Did you get Murray's white hats? They get them right up in white hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, might actually save some lives and some help. That's it's right. Yeah, that sure has. Not a, not a small thing. Yeah, we feel the same way. Right. So hopefully we'll get uh, as many complaints on Hermes as we did in Titan. So <laughs> close to zero. <laughs> right. Right. That's pretty remarkable. So, yeah, so we, we thank the Planning Commission for your attention over the last couple months. and staff and consultants for all their efforts too. I think it's a good result at the end of the day. Very good. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So Elizabeth Township, right? Jimmy Yes.
This is phase two of the Western Executive Park, the construction of 80,000 square foot office building and a 36,000 square foot retail center at Wilson and Manor River. Go ahead, Bray. Okay. Um, this was uh, so the, the DNA building is located here, which follows the mass. It matches the same layout as the as the approved master plan. This is uh, eighty thousand as Bob mentioned, eighty thousand square feet, three stories tall. So with the required parking, I'm calling this the south parking lot here and the east parking lot here. Stormwater will be managed with a uh, detention basin located here and two underground detention systems, one located under the uh, deck hockey and the second located under the parking lot in the south, south parking lot. Uh, the recreation area includes the deck hockey here, basketball court, volleyball court, and putting green. These facilities are for the DNA employees only and not open to the general public. Uh, the retail matches what's on the mass plan as well. Uh, the one change was we, we converted the retail on the east end to a, a second restaurant. So we have both end restaurants, one on the east and one on the west end. Underground detention is located here for the, uh, for the facility. The other, uh, also part of phase two was uh, we're grading out the pad for the future restaurant parcel located here. And we're grading out the pad for the future sports uh, medicine building located here and extending utilities to each one. We realize what we'll to come back for final approval for each one of those once the final plan is developed. Well. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. If anyone has any questions, I'll try and answer them. For you. So everything that's shaded there in gray is this phase? Correct. Except for B. Except for B. Yeah, this is a future office building, which was corrected on the yeah. plans. What's the current status of the other approvals, MPDS, uh, and uh, we haven't first we haven't submitted anything for the okay, MPDS. Still haven't submitted first, uh, PennDOT's still in the process. Yeah. We have we did get a uh, approval from FTMSA today. They you know we we own a cost estimate now. They approved our revised drawings for the uh, sanitary store. We have we have drawings into uh, <coughs> uh, MAWC as well, and I believe we would address the our chief's comments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Morrison, can you, can you explain to the planning commission the uh, what's going on with Pendot and uh, all this? Sure. Well, why don't we just go through the conditions? I have the transportation conditions listed first. It's probably the Josh Hado from here. here, and Mike Mudry's here also. Um, transportation improvements are proposed uh, to be uh, at the William Penn and Manor, lengthen the southbound left turn lane on Manor Road by 50 feet for a total of 220 feet, 225 feet of storage. The manor at Wilson Road construct an eastbound left turn lane on Manor Road with 225 feet of storage. Construction of a westbound lane on Manor Road with 75 foot of storage. Install a traffic signal. Uh, the applicant is committed to implementing these improvements prior to opening of phase two of the development. Um, in addition, uh, they're proposing uh, to construct a full access driveway, site driveway on Wilson Road and install a northbound we're recommending a stall northbound left turn lane on Wilson Road at the site driveway with 150 feet of vehicle storage. Um, the uh, traffic of Manor Wilson is uh, uh, not adaptive at this point. It didn't meet the warrants, but we're recommending that, uh, uh, that they be added to the corridor so that they can be monitored by PennDOT. Um, we still would like to further investigate the adaptive system uh, with PennDOT, uh, and we're recommending that the uh, 
the traffic signal be strobe light activated uh, preemption system uh, for the emergency uh, vehicles. Uh, the current light at the uh, man or at 22 and Manor uh, has a preemption system on it. So um, those are recommendations. Uh, what's different from what was proposed by the developer is the uh, left hand turn into the site on Wilson and uh, the uh, uh, preemption. Uh, if you note on the last last uh, or second page, uh, there's uh, an estimate of the number of uh, trips uh, and the impact fee uh, for all phases, uh, two through four is $485,000. Um, and based on uh, prior uh, uh, decisions by uh, council, uh, that this uh, traffic impact fee be credited uh, against the development costs for the roadway improvements. So those are the traffic improvements. I don't know if any of you have comments at that point. Do everybody understand what you know, I allowed them to yeah, Absolutely. Um, Josh Hato, David Weston Associates, traffic consultant. Um, we'll relay back, you know, we're in the process of getting the permit plans put together and submitted to PennDOT. PennDOT has approved the traffic study. Um, as he mentioned, Jim, the only difference, it's, or the difference is between what was recommended in the study and offered by the applicant. Um, further, ex further exploration of an adaptive traffic signal. So that's something that will be discussed with PennDOT during that process anyway. So that's going to happen. Um, and in terms of the strobe light preemption, we'll pass that along. I'm sure that that's not going to be an issue. Um, do you want to reiterate the northbound left turn lane on Wilson? The study found that, that turn lane not to be warranted. Um, we've priced it, you know, and advised Craig that that's probably an additional $350,000 for that improvement on top of what he's doing at the intersection, you know, combined with the impact fees, how that all works out. But, you know, we are still of the position that that turn lane, well, the turn lane is not warranted. And so we're still advising Craig to not necessarily do that, but you know, I understand Mike's here as well. It's a municipal road, ultimately that's the decision that needs to be made between Craig and the township. But just might to clarify that. But we have that in our recommended conditions. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, we'll note that uh, according to them, Michael, if you want to chime in there, um, um, Mr. Mudry's review indicated that uh, the full build out of the site would only uh, be three additional vehicles short of uh, warranting that left hand turn. And I think this is the type of improvement that could be required as a site improvement for the development um, and uh, would stick to the position that that probably should be put in now than later. So, so just supporting what Jim says in the MPC, you know, you have impact fees for offsite improvements so you don't go having developers build things half mile away and such. It clearly defines on-site improvement. This would be an on-site improvement. It's along their property frontage it's for their site access. You can require it whether it's warranted or not. Um, to Josh's point about it not being warranted, he's correct. It's not warranted, but it's off by three cars in one hour. So if there were three more cars out there when they count it, it would meet the warrants. So it's that close. It's an on-site improvement technically. So I was talking with Jim. I said, you definitely can make them do it. What Josh is proposing is to set up some kind of a mechanism in a developer's agreement where they would periodically monitor that until the warrant was actually met. I mean, when you go out tomorrow, the counts might be down 20, but you go out a month later, they could be up 30. You know, it's depending on when you count, what the traffic rope is like out there, you know. Well, and, and, our and so the, the, it's just they're proposing a mechanism that every year you go out and count and you just keep counting until it becomes warranted and then they'll build it. it I mean, it's it, it's it's a function of a number of factors. The, the I have a question. 
Yes. What's the error rate? You're only well, talking about three cars. That's what I mean. I, I, I could go out tomorrow. Yeah, to me, that's to me, it's in the noise of traffic counts. Like, you know, when we do traffic studies, we go out and count them one day and we run the whole traffic study off of that one day. I think three cars is within the error rate. I, and that's kind of what I said in my it's letter. That, you know, we could go out any given day. You know, July is different than December, than different than March. You know, it's. Well, let me it's, ask. It's, let me ask the planning commission members this because we're not going to sit there and debate traffic studies all night long. Uh, what's is the feeling of the planning commission that the left hand, left turn lane off of Wilson into the plan is needed considering the scope of what's being proposed up there? Okay. I, Are we I'm talking about a left hand it. turn lane into the site? Right. Yes. Or okay. Into the site. Yes, Wilson Road's two lanes right now. There's going to be all those new condos on the right and the new facilities on the left. And I won't belabor, but just one more clarification is, you know, the, the study does indicate and suggest a follow-up study or studies, bearing in mind that not only is this based on projections from when data was collected on Wilson Road, it's also a function of projections of how much traffic this development is going to generate. So when we're talking about three trips, hundreds of thousands of square feet of space, assumptions from you know, traffic study, we, I, I think it may be slightly misleading to say that it is definitively deficient or short of the criteria by three trips. So well, we, we would like the opportunity to at least go out once this development has been constructed or partially constructed to revisit this before puzzling over is that it seems to me that when you're in a construction phase, the cost of doing this later would be greater. And I guess I don't understand why push, kicking the can down the road really helps. Well, because we, we strongly believe that it's $350,000 today is a lot more than no dollars in the future. We're not trying to kick the can down the road. We very strongly believe and we believe our study supports the fact that that turn lane is not going to be more. And, that, and, 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 and I'm not saying Josh is wrong. He right. is absolutely correct. There is a line on a graph and he's right on the line just under it by that. So I'm not saying he's wrong. And I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying it's like, like, like you're saying, it does it make sense understand, to understand. Yeah. Yeah. What future there? growth, growth was accounted for in this study, in this corridor, in this area? It's just, you know, the, the PennDOT procedure is, you know, just a linear growth rate over a number of years to account for. Which, which no, no specific properties in the area and their zoning yeah. was taken into consideration yeah. or anything like because yeah. isn't this r3 over in this area well there's an uh, r3 piece behind it uh and there's also an r3 piece that was just recently purchased uh next to uh tractor sales off of Anna. so those right. both will end up all probably being apartments or townhouses okay so that's that was my point fairly heavily yeah yeah but it is it is PennDOT's criteria that's Unless those plans had applications at that time, that was not Craig's responsibility to account for specific development growth beyond his. Although they could affect his results. Now although he owns both parcels. Right. Chris. But if he yeah. develops them, he would you do it. Have <laughs> the road, you know, on the left, left is going to be White Valley, but on the right hand side, there's a large track that's I believe R3. Yeah. And if that land is developed, if the owner, if it's Greg, would be required to do a traffic study. And this could be reevaluated at that time also. The growth, the linear growth rate, by the way, was 1.12. So, so in their study, there was no, there's no specific thing. Like that was, it. It's just 1% of whatever's just, out there is just growing. I think growing. what I was getting at is we all know there's properties in the area. And right. not that's this applicant's responsibility. I was just right. bringing it out there. Well, what's, what are the improvements at the intersection of Wilson? I mean, I know we're going to strap trap right there. Is there left two lanes going in left turn? We have, uh, we have a number. Before. So down to 22, this left turn lane is getting extended. It's getting extended. extended. Right. We're building a new turn lane eastbound on Manor. Right. Up to Wilson. Turn. In doing so, we're also creating a short left turn lane in the other direction in the Chevy dealership traffic system. 
Okay. But coming in, in, in from Wilson, south of Wilson? No addition, nothing. Okay. So It'll be a one lane and, approach. Okay, that was my question. And, and Jim, did you mention you were considering crediting? Yes. Impact fee? Yeah. So the only thing I would tell you, Jim, is that and the impact fee would need to be updated because I don't think we're laying down on 22 variable right, but I mean, I think you're due for an impact fee update anyway, just to update the build years and the cost. But eventually we'd have to come back to you for you folks to add that intersection on for them to be eligible for the credit. I thought we added that intersection. I got it at the double check. I thought it was just the right turn lane down on 22. Okay. Well, I'm but I'm just saying we'll, we'll have to Mr. That. Sorky agreed to the improvements on his side of the road for his driveway. I believe we would need a release from him. I said it's not yet been. So you've been, has anybody even sent anything to him? There's been four phone calls to him and no return. Did anybody think about sending something in writing? Uh, I didn't think it was my responsibility to do that. Okay. All right. Is there anything else in here besides this uh, traffic impact fee? Ray still has to get his NPDS permits. Correct. Uh, there was mention of uh, there may be excess material on the site. You might have to get land. You might have to, if you're going to haul off, you're going to have to identify that site. You mm -hmm. may have to bond the road. Is that primarily yeah. top floor, Ray? That's mainly top floor. We can, we can adjust the site to balance the cut and fills, but the, the top floor, we can't use all the top floor. So okay. Uh, identify the uh, the plan that was submitted, uh, the master plan sheet was submitted in August, which is the update for the fire comments. Um, the utility plans, uh, the architectural renderings we have of the building, but we don't have the uh, retail restaurant. We need that before it goes to council. Okay. Um, all the glazing requirements met on the web. Well, it's all glass. You've seen the building. I can't remember. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. Um, we haven't seen anything on uh, the retail, as I said. Um, the, uh, you need the layout of the uh, restrooms and storage building that hasn't been finalized yet. Okay. And um, the composition. That's the one down the recreation. Yeah, and okay. the composition of the uh, surfaces. I'll give you a copy of this, right? How many conditions are there on this? Ten. 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 Okay, so this blank page is here. That's for notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Performance bond, the developer's agreement, and then geotech monitoring. Any questions or comments from anyone? I will have to enter into a You'll have to enter into a developer's agreement with that TMSA. Yes. Well. And is that in here? Yes. I guess the question I'm is how do you resolve this uh, turning line issue? How, how does that get resolved? Well, he either puts it in or he doesn't build it. That's how. Well, there's three options. One is he doesn't build it. Two is planning commission require, makes a recommendation to require it uh, to be built at the time of development of the site. Or the third is some kind of uh, surety is put in place that if it's warranted at a future date that it's put in. I, I don't like that third option. Yeah, I don't like that either. Is this our only shot at this, at this recommendation that we're making right now? No. They're going to come back with... No, this it was scheduled for a recommendation tonight. That's my question. You can table it if you like. Taking care of the table about I mean to see us make a definitive statement on that on that turning line. Well, it, it, it's right. the way I look at it is if council approves this as a condition, either accepts the condition and builds his plan, or he doesn't accept the condition and doesn't build any of that. Agreed. Is is there anything else? I mean, everything that's outstanding as far as the staff review. Yeah, it was a clean. Right, they did a nice job okay. with the plan submittal. Okay, can I have a motion? We'll either table it, no. recommend it for approval. Go ahead, Ed. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I recommend it be uh, forward to council uh, approval for, for this application with 
the conditions that the, uh, the left turning lane on Wilson be included as part of the, the plan. Any amendments? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, uh, Mr. Christian's up next. Thanks, Mike. You good? Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ray. Okay, Mike. Hey, good to see you, Ray. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I provided to you tonight. Uh, I guess I think it's the distributor that did it. Oh, um, uh, the attorney representing Mr. Fischion at the uh, prior meeting had uh, stated his position as to why uh, they believe that the uh, zoning was proper uh, for the area and not considered spot zoning. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we do. 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 Thank you, Mr. Morrison. Uh, I know the Planning Commission has already uh, been privy to the plan that Mr. Fischione is proposing. Uh, I know that Mr. Morrison addressed the issue of spot zoning. That seemed to be the bigger concern by the Planning Commission and the municipality. Uh, tonight, the engineers are here to address any questions. Um, this certainly is um, a change in the zoning, but not a substantial one. The RR zoning currently would permit 22 large upper scale lots in this particular location. What Mr. Fischione is proposing is 28 lots. That's in order to really make the development work from a financial perspective. Uh, Mr. Fischione is, it's his intention to live there. He is traveling this week, unfortunately, but his daughter is here. If you have any specific questions uh, as to their uh, future plans, um, we believe that this is the best opportunity for Mr. Fischione to be successful. And in the alternative, if he's not successful, it doesn't really materially change things from a municipal perspective going forward. Um, we're here <coughs> complaining for success, and uh, the engineers are here if you have any site-specific questions. So thank you. So this is just a recommendation on rezoning. It not, has nothing to do with the plan, right? Nothing. No. And we, we'll be coming back later on to the plan. We did have a... We did have a public hearing on the yes. rezoning. Yes, we did. Okay. And there will be a public hearing before council. before council. So, ladies and gentlemen, any comments or questions on this? Uh, thoughts on this request? I think there's going to be a, a public hearing with council. Uh, just say four of them. I have no real objection to this. To, to, materially changing this from RR to R1. I would just say that, you know, with the plans there, I think it's a, to, to me, it's a heavy lift when you, when you go from R1 to then try to take this down another notch to a PRD. I haven't been convinced from what I've seen that that's a, a worthwhile exercise. So you're saying it's 22 lots and it's going to end up being 22 lots. Well, I opinion. mean, I, it, Help us understand, well, yes, Help Sarah, us understand okay. your thought process. Well, taking it to RR1 allows how many lots? 28. 28, 28 from 22, correct. Uh, which, I, materially, it's not, a, it's not a heavy lift. It has public sewer. It has public water available. It's close to the park. And, and, and there's developments all around there, just, just beyond here. So from that standpoint, I think it's okay. But when we start trying to run this through a conditional use for a PRD to, to allow some of the additional things to go in there in smaller lot sizes. I, I just, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's what, to me, doesn't make sense. It doesn't really have anything to do with this, per se, but you're just looking at just you're looking throw that out there. there. You're you're looking at that. I we, also, like, we also looked yeah. at that as well. You're and actually, your comments pertain to, you know, down whether, the the, whether the PRD so as presented it, is, yeah. is viable. Yes, but again, the, I, I agree. The council, you. the council would have a final say as to those. Mm, well, there's, there's, there's uh, some flexibility. We're going to recommend if that, you know if it doesn't work out. Yeah, we're not. We're not <coughs> talking about your the proposed PRD here. 
first dog is right. strictly the right. rezoning. Right. It's and, a rezoning for one. And I share Chris's concerns about <clears throat> the. Uh, and, and Mr. Fischio is engaged, actually and he, he's willing to continue to work with the uh, municipality as to address those concerns. And as are the engineers, we've had, you know, extensive conversations about some of those concerns. Well, I think the bottom line here is with the plan being presented as part of the rezoning, uh, if uh, it does materialize that the 28 lots doesn't work, then we have a piece of property that's zoned R1 and may not be developed like Mr. Fischione envisions and could be sold off to someone else and developed in a very different way and then uh, may not be as acceptable as and, and uh, we, what we, this we understand made. that um, and we, we look at those issues, but this is not going to be attractive at all. <laughs> See, this, this just strikes me, is, you know, just taking your comments, Jim, is an opportunity for a win-win versus a lose-lose. I mean, I, I, this, this is where, where I'm coming from. So, All right. does anyone, does anybody else have any comments or concerns? All right. If there is none, then do you want to care to make a motion to recommend approval, denial? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recommend that we uh, move this on to council for approval. Uh, to change the zoning from RR to R1. Um, and leave it at that. I'll second, second that. Go to second. Yeah. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next one is the yeah. rezoning of uh, one and a half acres owned by Timothy and Patricia DiBiase on uh, 4051 William Penn Highway uh, from mixed use MU to B business. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Vesley's here tonight for a public comment on this item. Especially if you want to comment on this. Yeah, I wanted to just ask one specific question. Are you presenting these separately or together like last time that you were doing with Florence? Oh, we plan to do it together. Okay. Because I, I can ask you the same questions either way. Okay. Go ahead. Try yeah. to yeah. Go ahead. Um, Mr. DiBiase's property meets all the requirements for business as far as square footage, frontage, and everything else. So I have no objections to that portion of it. The only question I have is, is this to be changing the zoning if he reapplies to add the additional mixed use lot that's attached to this property? Will they be able to just do that, combine the smaller lot in with the business to make a larger property? Which lot are you referring There's to? There's a house right behind here that is a mixed use also, zoned by Dr. DiBiase. And the question just becomes, will they be able to bring this in, which is a 60 by 130 lot? At some other time to change so they that. they made application well. for that, Mr. Morrison? No. There's nothing on there for it, so. so no, it's, not at this time. Okay. We haven't applied for that property at all. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was asking to see, because it doesn't meet the business requirement, but would it change the adjoining lots if this is approved? No. Okay. So no, that will not change that. Okay. Yeah. Now wait on the Fox lot. That's the next one. Okay. Okay, well, we've had public hearings on the uh, this and the next one. Is there any uh, concerns, comments from members of the Planning Commission? No, I, I personally think it should be B. Yeah. yeah. My I opinion. think it's in line with our own. If they don't meet that, if they don't have the requirements for B for the adjoining properties, that's still going to go. It doesn't meet the square footage requirements. That's, it doesn't that's, meet that's, the front that's, It's not on the table to, uh, no. hasn't been applied. No, no, I'm talking about the the Fox property. It's actually the Fox property for next application. Okay, that's why I asked if they're being right. brought up at the same time. Uh, right now, they're separate ones. Okay, that's why I was asking. No, that's five. why I was asking because okay. they presented both as the same last time. Okay, so can I have a uh, recommendation on the rezoning of the DBS mm -hmm. piece from MU mixed use to B business? I'll make a motion to recommend 
uh, the rezoning of the DiBiase property from mixed use to business. For a second. Second. Second and third. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. And the next is the uh, request by Fox Junior Development to rezone approximately one acre of property. This is next door to the previous one, uh, 4075 William Penn Highway from mixed use to business. <coughs> Pretty straightforward, right? Thanks Make so. a motion that we oh, send the council yeah. approval. Yes. Yeah, okay. You're okay, Mr. President. Now, this is why I wanted to ask if it's okay. If 0.48 acres, it's 22,000 square foot with the paper road taken away and the other pie piece, and the requirement is 35,000 square feet. I just want to see how that's going to affect the other properties up the road from it. That don't meet the requirements, will they be able to reach out to this business? Non conforming the application indicates that the area is one acre, it's not even close. Okay, Mr. Orn, I'm sorry, is that one acre property? That's what we understand it to be, yes. We're referring to the Fox property, yes. Okay. Did I hear a motion? Yep. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Mr. Morrison, is there any other business? No, Mr. President. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll approve it. You said that tonight. <laughs> I did have a request to Mr. Morrison and the staff that uh, we somehow make it so that people can call in for meetings if you're out of town. The staff is working on that. We did it tonight. See this little box up here? Mm -hmm. That's a Zoom meeting. Okay, so we can, we can be absent and, and be present. And be yes. present. Uh, subject to solicitor's review. Okay. Okay. Um, you have to be determined. Come to where we want. <laughs> okay. Very good. Anything else, Mr. Morrison? No, we've still got full agendas coming. Okay. We got uh, two rezoning to the next meeting. And when is the next meeting? Uh, uh, it would be uh, is it in November? No, uh, December. 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 Chris, what day is that? December 13th. Okay. I will be here. Okay. Is there anything else for the good of the cause? A motion to adjourn, please. Motion. That was relatively painless, huh? It was. Yeah. Nice job, staff. Yeah, nice job, staff. Yeah. 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 I think the traffic light on three eighty is going to be a big improvement. Big improvement. A little arm twisting. He looked like he had his arm. He was holding his arm. Yeah.